turn up. Work are being taken for granted. <laughs> Workers being sold but out to big so banks, misguided. big tech, corporates, and the elite. We are not beholden to anyone or any party. You know, corporatists hate when working people join together to form unions. But for a century, major employers have waged a war against labor by forming corporate unions of their own. We need to call the Chamber of Commerce and the business roundtables what they are. They are unions for big business. Remember, elites have no party, elites have no nation. Their loyalty is to the balance sheet and the stock price at the expense of the American worker. I think we can all agree D.C. is a pretty treacherous area. Most legislation is never meant to go anywhere, and it's all talk. We are not renters. We are not tenants. But the corporate elite treat us like squatters, and that is a crime. It's time for both sides of Congress to stand their butts up. <laughs> That's the Republican senator he almost kind of fight with. Yeah, exactly. We need meaningful bankruptcy reform today. Corporate vultures buy up companies like Yellow Freight with the intent of driving them into bankruptcy and feasting on their remains. The courts leave workers begging for crumbs as third-tier creditors. Labor law must be reformed. Americans vote for a union but can never get a union contract. Companies fire workers who try to join unions and hide behind toothless laws that are meant to protect working people but are manipulated to benefit corporations. This is economic terrorism at its best. An individual cannot withstand such an assault. A fired worker cannot afford corporate delays and these greedy employers know it. We need corporate welfare reform. Under our current system, massive companies like Amazon, Uber, Lyft, and Walmart take zero responsibilities for the workers they employ. These companies offer no real health insurance, no retirement benefits, no pay leave, relying on underfunded public assistance. And who foots the bill? The individual taxpayer. The biggest recipients of welfare in this country are corporations, and this is real corruption. Oh my God. We must put workers first. But he's what saying things this crowd has never heard. To the security of our nation than a long-term investment in the American worker. Something is wrong in this country, and we need to say it out loud. I will You're always just speak get for America and the American worker, both the union and non-union. The Teamsters love this country. Our 1.3 million members move America on the roads, in the ports, on the rail, and in the air. And at the end of the day, if the powers to be stop me from raising my voice on behalf of American workers, I will not have one single regret. I still carry my commercial driver's license. I still have my place on the union seniority list. You'll find me back in Boston driving a tractor trailer, delivering equipment for Shaughnessy and Ahern. Because I have the protection of a union contract that gives me the freedom to speak my mind and to fight like hell. God bless the greatest nation. Thank you very much. I, a guy confused yeah. as to whether yeah. he should clap. Right. That was perfect. Yeah, that was perfect. I don't even think Trump. I think Trump was confused. Yeah, he's like, I wait, mean, why did we allow I this? I could have just punked the convention. Yeah, no, guys, that was an unbelievable speech. Yeah. So we're doing, we're having fun here, of course, at the RNC, and we're doing yeah. polls. And one of the polls was best speech and worst speech of the night. And we're looking forward to the results of that in a little bit for you guys. And make sure you're watching us live. You know, the show starts at six o'clock Eastern every day, right? And now we're doing all the speeches right after the speech. So watch all the RNC with us now. Uh, Sean O'Brien, head of the Teamsters, gives this uh, speech. We were wondering what he was going to say. And so it was the it, prime time speech. Yeah, of convention. it was the most important speech of tonight. That was the most interesting speech I've ever seen at a Republican convention. At the any convention. I'm sorry. Interesting. Like there were oratorical flares at other conventions. Sorry to interrupt you. That was the 
most interesting speech I've ever heard at a convention, a party. Okay, I'm gonna add to the superlatives, okay? The most surprising speech at a convention I've ever heard. So Barack Obama's speech at the RNC, in, I'm sorry, at the DNC in 2004 was better, right? As a speech, yeah, as a legendary before, historic speech. Saying, yeah. But as a for surprising, this wins, right? right? Yeah. Second of all, that might have been the most progressive speech I have seen, not just at an RNC, but at a DNC. Yeah. Of either convention. At Netroots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a fiery progressive speech on behalf of the average American worker and against corporate rule. And I can't believe it happened at a Republican <laughs> convention. I can't believe it. And, yeah. I, and people here are not really paying such attention. It's a small sample where we're sitting right now and it's late. A lot of people are in the hall. But I don't think people knew what to make of it. And even looking at Trump at the end, I don't think as he turned to his running mate, J.D. Vance, I don't think he knew what to make of that speech. This was a an unbelievable thing. And it came right after I was saying, I wonder if anybody's ever going to just surprise the convention. This was a surprise at the convention. So now let me break it down for you guys. So there is downsides to the speech and they're not insignificant. And then I'm going to explain the upsides. So the downsides are it makes the Trump and the Republican Party look like they're pro-union when they are not. They're the ones who kill every legislation that's pro-union. They're the ones that introduce the legislation that is anti-union. The workers, they claim, you know, right to work state, that's total misnomer. But what that does is it's an anti-union legislation pushed by Republicans all across the country. It makes it seem like, well, you know, I guess unions and average American workers, Republicans, Democrats, let's call it even, right? And that's really misleading. That is not the case at all. Um, so that that is wrong. Um, and it makes it seem like Donald Trump is the is standing up for the average man. That's greatly misleading. So I get the downsides of the speech, but you know there was a controversy as to whether he should have spoken here. Now that I've seen the speech, he definitely should have. He was right to accept the speech. He was right to give the speech, and he gave a great speech. So now, so I just told you the downsides. Let's talk about the upsides. First of all, a Republican crowd has never heard a speech this progressive. Has never heard a speech that attack corporate elites in the way that Sean O'Brien, the head of teams has just did. So he talked about a political caste system where the donors are at the top. He talked about corporate vultures, economic terrorism that corporations do to the average American. <laughs> they would never allow that in a democratic convention because they say, oh, no, no, we're gonna seem too radical. We're gonna seem too left wing, we're gonna seem too progressive. No, 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 our donors will be upset. And I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of Republican donors tonight who are livid that that guy was allowed I mean, to give that speech. He said it. There were people yeah. within this party. He insinuated, at the very yeah. least, people within this party who did not want him to speak at this convention. And you understand why? Because he gave a message that was decidedly against the, the the corporate wealth of this party, decidedly against Donald Trump, who fought unions as a casino owner, who fought unions as a real estate developer, who spent most of his life life uh, as a professional before he became a politician and entertainer trying to work around unions and the demands of unions. So it's a shocking thing to see the Teamsters uh, here at this convention. I was saying to neutralize this, the Democrats could invite him. And and what? how would he look if he said, no, he's not coming to that convention? I think the message he gave today was not a message to this convention. It was a message to the country and that, that it was nonpartisan and people have to start looking out for workers. And you know, uh, maybe that's gonna come to fruition. He cited some Republican lawmakers. He, he name checked people like um, Maliotakis and Lawler from New York. He mentioned Mark Wayne Mullen who with whom he had a, you know, a, a somewhat famous spat. But I think that this was an extreme Extraordinary, uh, extraordinarily effective speech, and that it got people to pay attention to something they didn't think they had to. And I'm so interested to poll this and to see what people thought of the speech tonight. Yeah, and so um, I'm going to give you some of his killer lines too in a second, and then I'm going to get to my theory or conspiracy theory. It's just for fun; it's not that important. Well, but I want it on the record, and you'll you'll see that in a second. It's not that but important until it becomes important, then we'll hear about it over and over again. There, there you go. Now somebody's got that. No, seriously. Um, what's important is what happened tonight, and its ramifications for both for politics and for the economy. Uh, what happens later in politics is not that important. That's why I say uh, that. So now he said that the biggest recipient of welfare in this country is corporations. That's a great line. That's a terrific line. That's totally true. And the fact that it was said at a Republican convention is great because it then people that don't normally hear that hear it for the first time. And they're like, oh yeah, wait, I hate welfare. 
Yeah, it's true, isn't it? That corporations get these giant multi-billion dollar subsidies. Why do we give the richest people in the world subsidies? Why do we give them welfare? That doesn't make sense. And it's one thing if he says it at a Democratic convention, but when he says it at a Republican one, more people are gonna hear it, different people are gonna hear it. It's gonna resonate more and it's a little bit more man bites dog instead of dog bites man. So it stands out as a shocking speech at an RNC and hence will get more attention, which is good because I want America to hear this message. Can you believe I'm saying that there's a speech at the RNC that I want the whole country to hear? Yeah, That is again, totally shocking. Let me give you more stuff he said. And again, one more thing that's shocking about this, he mentioned Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, who I call Senator Wayne Grow. But anyway, they almost got into a fist fight. Yeah. Okay. And he, that's a Republican senator from Oklahoma. So this guy has not been shy about fighting Republicans. And he mentioned a bunch of Republicans that he gave credit to. But those guys did deserve that credit. They did do the things that he's talking about. He didn't lie. He didn't say that Trump helped unions because Trump hasn't helped unions. And so, and what was missing from the speech was how great Trump is. Well, that's what all he said was yeah. Trump is open minded, which, by the way, is a big thing. Is a big thing. But he never said that Trump did anything right, for, good for unions because he hasn't. No, not only that. I mean, he gave a keynote address on a night of a of a convention and did not endorse the candidate. I mean, the, the, the you know in the context of political conventions in the world that seems like oh you know no big deal michael but in the context of political conventions your speaker did not endorse you they said you were a tough sob for getting off the ground after you were shot agreed uh you were tough uh you were somebody who who's open to listening agreed but to not come out and say I want you to support donald trump uh for president or i'm supporting donald trump for president nothing like that it was, it was, as Jenk said, it was the most progressive speech I've ever heard at a convention. And so now, now two other really important parts here. So number one, by appearing, he's building leverage to use again with or against the Democrats. Totally, totally. Okay, so he's saying, hey, listen, you guys take us for granted. Here I am giving a keynote speech at the Republican convention. I'm not playing with you guys. Yeah. And that is good, strong leverage building. There you go. That's using your power. Yeah. Okay. He says he looks out the window in that speech. He said, I look out the window of my office, I look at the Capitol, I see all these people going in there. They don't do anything, basically. And so he didn't say Republicans or Democrats. He said the whole lot of you. And it's it's a it was a fascinating speech. Mario Cuomo gave a very progressive speech at a at a uh, at a Democratic convention that you know we would compare progressive speeches, but yeah. this was a, a speech about workers that this convention, a Republican convention, has never heard, and I don't think they're going to have heard it too well. I think he's going to get criticism from the people here. Yeah, and uh, so he mentioned corporatists again at a Republican convention, and so that corporatism is never mentioned in a Democratic convention because it's considered too radical to mention corporate rule. Again, partly because their donors finance the whole thing and their donors are all corporations. Right. Uh, but, uh, but he connected, this is the most important part to me out of all of this. He connected the elites, because the Republicans always talk about elites, right? And they hate the elites. He connected the elites to corporations. So like when the Republicans do it, it's nefarious, it's, but it's vague. It's like, oh, the international elites, global elites, right? And you don't know what they're referring to. They never clarified because, again, that's actually the people who backed the Republican Party, right? And the Democratic Party. So they, that's why they never clarified it. But he clarified it. He said, no, it's the corporate elites that run this country. And the Republican voters needed to hear that message yeah. because that's going to connect. And so when he talked about corporate greed, and how the chamber, he attacked the Chamber of Commerce at a Republican convention. What the hell's going on here? That was amazing. Okay. And so that was terrific. And then I, and he says, something is wrong with America and we need to say it out loud. And that was a really good line because it's true. And it, this is like, guys, part of the reason why I'm excited is because he just gave you half of my book. That's, that's what I wrote about injustice is coming, how corporatism has taken over and something is wrong in America, but the politicians are not willing to say it out loud. And what's wrong is these corporate elites that have taken over the government and taken over our society. And the fact that you're finding out about that at an RNC versus a DNC, 
is not necessarily credit to the Republicans, but it is damning of the Democrats. Yeah, it is damning. And again, it opens an opportunity for the Democrats to really address this. I mean, that's the good part about going second is you it's it's like in, in court, right? You get to rebut and you get to, you know, do your close after the other side closes. You can answer this. In Chicago in August, you can bring this guy if you want. First of all, you should make him your nominee. Uh, but but the the point of it is that, that, that they have a chance to answer this, to invite him to talk about these issues and and to uh, address this in a very clear way. Now that it's been laid out, and to to own these people and to have Sean O'Brien the next day say, "Hey, I listened to what they said, and you know they heard what I said in Milwaukee." Yeah, Michael, you're going to make me go over the top. Uh, because if Sean O'Brien was their nominee, I'd vote for the Republican Party. As as I said, as I said that, as I said that, I knew you were going to say something like that. But I will say this: that he would never be the nominee of the Republican Party. He could never win the nomination because of all the things he said tonight. Which is why, you know, it it, it is a, a discomforting thing for them to hear this about yeah. uh, their party. I, look, I, I want to be super clear. He does not represent where the Republican Party is today at all. Okay. But if he somehow, if that wing, because he's a real populist as opposed to the fake populist of Donald Trump and JD Vance. And if the real populist actually took over the Republican Party and turned it into an economically populist party, well, then the party switched again and I'd, and I'd switch. And a lot of people then get super mad. They're like, no, you should be a Democrat forever. But wait a minute, if Democrats are the bad guys and the Republicans are the good guys, why would you stay a Democrat? Now, that is not what's happening today, okay? That is not the current state of affairs. But, Jen but, was but the parties did switch before, exactly. <laughs> the the <laughs> parties switched before. Lincoln and, and the Republicans were the progressive party. Yeah. So And the Democrats were the Dixiecrats who were the racists down in the South. So should we have been a Democrat then? No, right? So it depends on what they're for. Okay, now finally we get to most important point in terms of this particular election. Okay, Donald Trump letting him speak, even if they didn't properly vet the speech, even if he didn't endorse him, and even if he gave a super progressive speech, was a brilliant move. Uh, and it's because he he it still, was because you could say it now. You say it, yeah. And even if people don't hear the speech, well, the Teamsters spoke at the Republican convention, the head of the Teamsters. So union it gives a union guy who didn't watch the speech or who doesn't pay close attention, but who votes because they always do. Ah, well, if O'Brien spoke there, then. We're good, and I, I like Trump. So it's it's great for that. It also really uh, burnishes his populist bona fides. And if you want to be populist, you say words like bona fides. Okay, <laughs> seriously, like it makes him look like a real populist. And the other thing it does is it gives you some hope that he's going to listen to outside voices and be different than an average president. It, now, is that true? I don't know, but it was true tonight. Yeah. And you do have to give him credit for that. You do, but I don't think this ends tonight because I think a lot of the way this is going to be covered, this is just me being predictive and I may be wrong, is going to say that that the Republicans got punked a little bit tonight. And this isn't really who they are. And they're going to have to distance, many of them are going to find themselves distancing themselves from this speech, what have you. I I don't think it's going to be as clean as it is right here as we talk about it. I may be wrong and it may may not be that extreme, but I don't think it's a slam dunk yet. So yes, it would be good if that's for them, if that's if what you say happens. I don't think we can we can take the temperature of this just yet. Well, I'm now super curious how Republicans are going to react to this. Yeah, speech. that's what I was saying. Yeah, because look, you weren't super. I told you, before. but Michael made me. Yeah. Okay, and so <laughs> that's all I wanted to hear. All right. So, guys, we're going to give you the poll results a little bit later, and I'm sure you guys. I mean, after, especially after we, you know, uh, said all the things that we did, uh, making the best speech of the night. Uh, I'm curious what you think is the worst speech. But the reason I bring that up is because, and by the way, you could also, uh, you know, vote in YouTube community if you're watching this later, right? And then you missed the live chat version of the poll. So the reason I bring that up though is. Um, Look, for us, we were watching these speeches and there's, and we were telling you as we're doing the live play by play, standard, 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 nothing interesting, standard Republican talking point, lie, not true, boring, uninteresting, right? And this, and this is why we come to conventions. <laughs> so somebody like Sean O'Brien can come and rock our world. I'm still voting for Marshall Blackburn as the best speech. Yeah. I really <laughs> love that speech. Okay, so now my fun. Conspiracy theory, okay? No, no, no. So you have fun conspiracy theory intro music? 
Uh, not yet, but we'll work on it. Um, so guys, Sean O'Brien speaks at the RNC. I think Sean Fain will speak at the DNC. So now those are the two toughest union fighters I've seen in my lifetime that I've been paying attention to politics. Okay, and Sean Fain will probably give as fire a speech and he'll be a little bit more clear about how the Democrats are the good guys. And he will endorse Joe Biden because he already has, which right. is what again, the, the keynote speaker tonight did not do it for Donald Trump. Or he'll endorse whoever the candidate is. Um, okay. Yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right. true. Then in 2028, Sean O'Brien and Sean Fain run together as a ticket. And it looks like a nonpartisan ticket. One of them spoke at the DNC, one of them spoke at the RNC. Right. They're for the average American worker. They're populists, they're economic populists, and, and they're against corporate rule. I'm telling you right now, look. Now they'll be independents and they'll get 8% of the vote and the Democrats and Republicans. If will well, if, at 40 no, but then you know what? It's up to the parties. If whichever one's a smarter party and the more honest party would grab those guys, make them the oh, ticket, so. and they'd win in a landslide in 2028. And I'd vote for that ticket. So I'm look, we're like Sean O'Brien wanted to accomplish. I'm open for business, not in 2024, but in 2028. If the Republicans say we're going in a totally different direction, we're going Sean O'Brien and Sean Fain and the average American worker, I'll go to your side, okay? So I don't care about R or D or random letters, okay? That makes no difference to me. These guys are economic populists, they're fighting for the average American. If they, if they do that in 2028, if they're with a major party, it's a guaranteed victory, okay? So are they thinking about that today? The reason why I say it's a theory rather than just a fun thought is these two guys are some of the smartest guys I've seen in in the political world. Yeah, they're not politicians, but they intersect with politics by the nature of what they do. Incredibly savvy. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody this savvy in a long, long time. Both Sean O'Brien and Sean Fain, who's the head of the UAW. Okay, so if so, they might be savvy enough that they thought that through. Four years, uh, you know, that's pushing no, it, but it's pushing it, it. Yeah. it's pushing it. Yeah. But if they run, oh, I'm going to take all the credit in the world. Of course. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, guys, it's not impossible. And so you don't have to worry about it today. It's not important for the 2024 election. That's why I say it's just a fun uh, note at the end, right? But as far as getting back to the relevant part of tonight, a home run speech. Uh, most progressive speech I've seen at, a, at any convention. It happens at the RNC. It's shocking. It's amazing. Uh, and uh, and so, you know what? I will say credit to, as I said earlier, but I'll end on this. Credit to Donald Trump for at least allowing it at the RNC. Shocking and positive.